Hey y'all, welcome to Colab. My name is Claude Holiday, and I'm going to be serving as your instructor for the duration of these Colab modules. Um, so firstly, we're not going to spend too much time going into the specifics of what Colab is. Um, at this point, you guys have probably been taking classes for other Colab modules, and so we should have a general idea, but a quick overview. The goal of this is to just give you some insight into maybe an art form or a specific practice that you didn't have insight into before. So again, just trying to expand your knowledge base to the best of our ability. This collab specifically deals with photography. Um, and more than that, it deals with photography and the way that it informs your life, but on a larger level, the way that it informs culture in our larger society. So how does photography kind of move the world for the most part? Um, I do think it's important to get into some intros just because again, you just got this random person talking to you. So a little bit of background. Uh, my name is Kalada Holiday. I am currently a photography and English teacher at Bronx Collegiate Academy um, and also at East Harlem Tutorial Program. So I teach photography um, and I also teach English at the high school level. Um, and for me, I can say, just on a personal level, photography is something that I not only teach, but it's also something that just embodies a large portion or a sizable portion of my everyday life. Um, I, a little bit more background, I'm originally from Jersey and I came to New York City directly after college. Um, and I didn't study photography in school, so it wasn't something that I really interacted with on a direct level until I actually stumbled into the passion on my own. I stumbled into photography well after college um, and actually after I originally began teaching. And so the first thing that I wanted to kind of speak towards is the idea that you guys are already starting off at a great place. The idea that you're actively looking to establish a passion or learn more about a passion or learn more about a field at this age is already an investment in yourself. And so in that regard, that's something that you should already be relatively proud of, right? But beyond that, I think that photography is one of those mediums or one of those art forms that really has the potential to not only impact the larger world, but specifically in your instance, it can directly inform your worldview or affect the way that you move in the world, right? And to kind of speak to that a little bit, just to share some of my personal practice in terms of photography. Um, I carry a camera with me every day. I've carried a camera with me every day for, I would say, the past six to seven years at this point. We all carry cameras with us every day in terms of our cell phones. Um, and the best camera is whatever camera you have on you. So I don't want you to think that you need to carry a camera outside of your cell phone on you every day. When I first started taking pictures, I started taking pictures with my cell phone. The real focus that I want you to kind of, or the real thing that I want you to kind of take away from that idea is the fact that I was actively carrying a camera with me every day informed how I moved in the world every day. And so living in New York City, for example, just think about all the things that we interact with every day that we don't even pay attention to, that we don't even give a second glance to. Things or people, places, perspectives, landscapes, buildings, there's so much that we encounter in New York City that in truth, we couldn't encounter anywhere else in the world, right? But it's the idea that if you've been here long enough, and this is, this is true outside of New York City, but I think especially in New York City, if you've been here long enough, you tend to start to take some of that stuff for granted. It just becomes something else that's just the daily background of kind of your commute or just whatever you're going through throughout your day, right? But that doesn't change the fact that what we pass on an everyday basis is valuable. It's beautiful. It's insightful. We can learn from it. We can grow from it. It can affect us if we're open to it. And I think that's one of the main draws for me 
of photography is that photography has the ability to impact self. It has the ability to make you more naturally curious about the world around you and about yourself to a different degree, right? Because the things that you notice about the world around you speaks to the things that you're passionate about, the things that you're drawn to, the things that you actually value as an individual. And so when I say that photography has the ability to impact self, I simply mean I learn about myself through photography every day. The things that I'm naturally drawn to in terms of making pictures speaks to who I am as an individual. And sometimes it can speak to who I am as an individual in a more direct way than I'm, ab than I'm able to even recognize on my own, right? For example, let's tie this back to yourselves. Think about the images that move you. Think about the pictures that stand out in your memory. What do those pictures say? And on another level, what do those pictures say about you? Or rather, what does your connection or affinity to those pictures say about you? The fact that you're drawn to this image not only speaks to the image, but it speaks to you personally. And that's one of the ways that photography can inform your individual worldview, right? But that's not all photography can do. We all know that Photography can obviously impact the world. There are, well, I can't speak for you. I can't speak for y'all. But as someone who spends an inordinate amount of time on Twitter, way more time than I should, photography for me has directly impacted the world in countless ways. I can't stress how many images seem to directly influence our culture or directly influence politics or directly influence even like the way that we interact with each other on a basic level if we're thinking about some pictures right um i think that a great example of this and i will at some point be sure to get you guys some images from this individual um, because I realize that I don't have one of his photo books readily available right now. But when we think of uh, Jacob Rees and how the other half lives, the idea that given insight into how a community of people lives can affect how we treat that community of people. Or even a little bit more recently than that, we think about all of the photography from the civil rights period right? Some of which we will actually get into today. That photography directly had the impact or directly had the potential to impact society. Because people seeing what was actually happening changed the way they felt about what was happening. They could read about it in a newspaper, but that's different than seeing an image of it. The image resonates in a way that sometimes text alone can't. And so in that regard, photography directly has the ability to also change our world, right? Think about even some of the things that are kind of going on in our world right now. When you think about the protests, imagine how you would feel about these protests. And when I say protests, sorry, I'm speaking about the kind of George Floyd protests or the protests in response to the police killing of George Floyd um, and then the subsequent Black Lives Matter protests that have taken place across the entire nation. When we think about these protests, think about how effective they would be if we didn't see them, if there was no imagery of it. It wouldn't, ne it wouldn't be nearly as effective, right? And so I think that that speaks to the idea that without proper documentation of the things that's happening or without some degree of a visual lens being put to the important instances in our society or in our history, 
we lose some of the significance of those instances. If we don't have photos of some of this stuff, and I mean, it's cliche, but yo, know, photos are it didn't happen, right? And so again, we not only are speaking about the idea that photography can impact ourselves and the way that we move in the world. It can make us more naturally curious. It can make us just more naturally observant. It can make us, it, or it can give us a heightened sense of attention to detail because we're noticing things that we wouldn't have noticed before if we weren't actively looking to take pictures, right? So it impacts ourselves, but it also impacts the world around us. It literally has the potential to move culture forward or to move culture backwards, to regress it. We've seen imagery weaponized in a negative way too. Today, I know that you guys probably don't want to listen to me just talk and ramble for forever. So I did want to show you guys a few pictures as well. I wanted to show you some pictures that resonated with me and kind of informed my photographic practice, but also potentially changed my worldview, right? Because I'm speaking to the idea that photography has the, the ability to change the way that we view our worlds. And so I wanted to show some images that have maybe changed the way that I view my world. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab some of these books. And I think a good place to start. Ooh. Firstly, this is taken from one of my favorite photo books. And so I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of photo books throughout the course of this class. Uh, in general, I think photo books are a great resource. And when we think about <clears throat> Uh, how we kind of grow as photographers one of the things and this is kind of paraphrasing one of the things that one of my favorite photographers Gary Winogrand said was and this again this is paraphrasing it's not the exact quote at all but something along the lines of you learn how to make work or how to make good photographic work by looking at good photographic work so by looking at the at strong photographic work from other photographers and by making work, by getting out in the field, getting out on the streets, trying to actually take pictures, stepping outside of your comfort zone and putting yourself out there. And so the first tenet of that is looking at good work, right? And so I want to start with, again, just a few pictures from Magnum Contact Sheets, which is a really interesting photo book that gives insight into how some very, uh, famous isn't the word, the word actually, talented is a much better word because it's really a matter of skill, right? Some very talented photographers, it gives insight into how they actually made their images. So it not only shows some of their more famous pictures, but it shows contact sheets that show how they got to that image. So that show what led up to it. And I think that that's also a really useful thing to, to study when it comes to photography not only the image or the end image, but how did the photographer get to the image? That's kind of how we grow too. So I just want to show a few pictures from this book and I'm gonna start off by showing some images, well, two images in particular, from Paul Fusco, who was a photographer who actually took pictures of Robert F. Kennedy's funeral train. And so I, without getting too heavy in history, because y'all aren't here for that, Robert F. Kennedy was John F. Kennedy's brother, who unfortunately was also assassinated. And after his assassination, he was, his body was taken back to the East Coast, and I can't remember specifically where, I apologize, to be buried. Um, and while it was going across the nation, there were a number of, or there was a photographer on board who took images of from the train of people who came out essentially to the path that the train was traveling on to just say their last goodbyes to Robert F. Kennedy. And so the, the whole series is really powerful work. Um, okay, so apologies that I'm not in the frame anymore, but this was the easiest way for you to be able to look at the book. Um, and so we're just gonna look at a few of Paul Fusco's images really quickly. And so this is again, just some images from the funeral train. We're going to kind of, not breeze through these, but these are kind of just, um, 
Some people refer to these as outtakes, kind of just extra shots that while still really strong, didn't necessarily maybe make the final cut of this. Um, but you can see, again, these are all kind of powerful in their own particular way. I really like this one here, um, kind of the diversity of it. But we're going to go to three images in particular from this set um, that I think are actually the most important ones to show. So if you look at this image at the top here, firstly, so I'll try and get it straight just so we can all take it in fully. I really love this image. And I think that one of the reasons why I really love this image is because it is a reminder for me of, um, in some ways, my own disconnect with politics and our American political system. It feels like I can't even imagine the notion of coming straight from work or whatever I was doing just to catch a glimpse of a train passing by that's maybe carrying a politician that resonated with me. And there are some activists and civil rights figures who, again, I really aspire towards, but I think that it's really rare for us to have this type of connection with politicians now. And because of that, it's that's one of the main reasons why this picture resonates so heavily with me, is because it's a reminder of almost like a time forgotten in some ways. Um, and if you look at this bottom picture, we'll do, again, this one and then one more after that. I really like this image because this was the first image from this set at least that to me really spoke to the idea of um, beauty and imperfection. So the idea that a picture doesn't need to be perfect for it to be kind of uh, a really strong picture. And I think that one of the things that resonated here was that the only people who were really in focus is this small family right here. When we look on the outside of the frame, Everything else, for the most part, is kind of out of focus. I mean, there's a little bit of focus here, but the main things that I want you to kind of draw away from this is that this isn't a technically perfect picture at all, by any stretch of the imagination. Nor is the next picture that I'm going to show you, which is actually my favorite from this entire set. And so if you take in this image, um, Again, for me, this image is a really strong representation of the concept of wabi-sabi, um, the Japanese concept that things don't need to necessarily be perfect for there to be value or beauty in them. And if you look at this picture, that's kind of what stands out about this picture to me. It's not perfectly in focus. Um, you can't even really fully make out all the figures, for example. It's difficult to even make out this individual here. But that doesn't change the fact that this picture still resonates. It still feels really strong to me. It feels like it has an emotional value. Um, it definitely has a historical significance when you think about Robert F. Kennedy and his relationship to African Americans um, and civil rights. But again, I really just want you all to lean into the idea that your pictures don't need to be perfect for them to still be really strong or important pictures. And the next picture that I wanted to show you that kind of had a really sizable impact on me as a photographer is from Jim Goldberg's Rich and Poor. Um, and it's one of my favorite photo books, if not my favorite photo book. And it just details his experiences kind of documenting, it's, it's really straightforward, documenting people who are more well off versus people who are struggling financially. Um, and I'm just gonna show you two quick pictures from this book. But the reason that this book had a sizable impact on me was because it was a reminder of the notion that text and images can sometimes support or enhance each other. Um, and that pictures can be made stronger by virtue of text. I think they can also be made weaker by virtue of text if you don't include the correct text or the right type of text. But I think that that's actually something that's really important for me and I think for all of us as photographers because we live in this social media age where so many of our pictures have captions. So many of our pictures are tied to some degree of text. And so I think that it's important for you to understand the relationship between text and pictures. So we'll just show two, quick, two pictures really quickly. This first image. <clears throat> so the way Jim Goldberg essentially set this up was that he would take pictures of individuals or groups of individuals and he would then ask them how, he would ask them to write something 
in response to the image. Or he would ask them a series of questions and he would put down a quote from them. I think that that's really strong because it also allows us to not only gain insight into these subjects and the photographer via the actual image, but we learn something about their perspective in terms of the actual text as well. And the text for me is what kind of really puts this image over the top. It's a strong image on its own. Um, you can kind of see the emotional connection between these two figures. Um, you can see the degree of stress or anxiety on El Chuco, who is this figure on the right with the bandana. Um, but you also see the degree of like intimacy and connection and love, especially with the hand on the shoulder um, from Manny, who was the individual on the left side of this frame. Their quotes, though, just put it right over the top for me. El Chuco says, Manny loves me, but I am too strong to love him. Manny simply said, this photo makes me want to cry. And for me, there's just something that's so incredibly sad about the unrequited love in this image, the nature of the unrequited love in this image, the fact that El Chuco thinks that loving someone would make him weak or would, would, would take away from his strength, or that he's in some capacity too strong to love as if love doesn't take strength. It's just a really strong and, and in some ways depressing image. Um, but I also think that it's important because it was a reminder for me at least that I need to be aware of the way that I utilize text when it comes to my image if I do choose to caption the image. Um, because if you're not going to use text in a way that really enhances an image, I would recommend to just leave the text out of the image, okay? Um, and so we can just kind of take this one in again. And there's Manny's signature down there, obviously. And the last one I want to show you from Jim Goldberg is from the rich side of the book. Not this picture, though that's a good picture. It's this image. <laughs> and bear with me, because I will have to read it. But if we see, it's an image of two relatively, like, again, well-off, because this is the rich side of the book, so two wealthy individuals. And for me, firstly, let's take in the image. Kind of just a well-off family. I do want you to take note of the distance between them. The fact that they're posed together, but they're really not posed together in a lot of ways. Um, she's so far removed from the front from where he's sitting the idea that he's seated and she's standing kind of doesn't really sit well with me a lot of the pictures kind of speak to a, Maybe a potentially flawed dynamic But then you read the text and Look at what this wife has to say Or actually let's start with the husband No, no, let's start with the wife. I'm sorry because <laughs> it's just ridiculous Edgar looks splendid here his power and strength of character come through. He is a very private person who is not demonstrative with his affection. That has never made me unhappy. I accept him as he is. We are totally devoted to each other. That's what this woman had to say. They are totally devoted to each other. They love each other. She knows she's not expressive, but she still deals with him. And this is what he had to say about his wife. My wife is acceptable. Our relationship is satisfactory. Beyond the fact that this picture just moved me, this picture specifically was a reminder of an important lesson in photography that you want to make an image that oftentimes captures things as they actually are and that sometimes maybe captures intangible things that other people wouldn't even be able to pick up on this image to me perfectly encapsulates uh, it, for for me it perfectly encapsulates kind of like the dynamic between this relationship this husband thinks his wife is acceptable and her relationship is satisfactory and yet 
she seems to be in for me this this image just it's just powerful and again I don't think that this is necessarily um, the most positive work I think that in a lot of ways this is actually a really kind of sad story but I think that that maybe speaks to the importance of it just the difference in their perspectives seems really important here right um, and so yeah this is Jim Goldberg's work and I'll show you one more photographer who I think has had a really sizable impact on me and there are too many to count, too many to name honestly but um, I'll show you guys one more photographer whose work has really resonated with me and that I've learned a lot from okay and the last book that I'm actually going to reference and you can tell maybe by my cover that it's kind of seen better days is you can barely make out the title here Robert Frank's The Americans and so Robert Frank actually just passed away last year and for a lot of people who are invested in documentary photography street photography um, Robert Frank kind of represents the pinnacle of just what you can aspire towards. Um, he was <clears throat> a European who famously came to America to kind of document Americans, hence the title of the book. And again, the, the entire book is really strong. This is also one of my favorite photo books. You can tell by how much I've looked through it. I only have time, unfortunately, to show you two images from this book. So the first image I'm gonna show is arguably his most famous image. And on depending on the book that you get, um, this is actually the cover photo. And the reason why I think this image really resonated with me or moved me was because this image serves as a direct reminder of the idea that sometimes the world gives you gems if you're able to be observant enough for them and intuitive enough for them. For me, this picture almost perfectly encapsulates the nature of segregation. Um, and kind of the impact that it actually has on society. And I think that we can literally see like a hierarchy of how people are almost treated in this nation, at least during this time period when this was taken in the 50s, um, but possibly past that, right? We see on the left side of the frame, white men moving over, white women moving further over, white children and then we see the transition into black people or African Americans, right? And so literally it's segregation via African Americans to the back of the bus. But I think that more than that, even the discrepancy between the black man being ahead of the black woman here seems to reflect the nature of oppression and white supremacy in this nation. In that it negatively impacts women of color more than anyone else. Um, and so I think that for me, this image just feels really powerful. And the chances of even running into a scene like this is, is difficult, but I think that it speaks to the nature of being observant and just being ready, you know? Um, he didn't have an opportunity to make a number of shots or a number of pictures about this scene. He really had an opportunity to make one or two and he took advantage of his opportunity. And so it's a good reminder to always be ready. You never know what the world's gonna throw at you. You always wanna be ready to document something, um, if need be. And the second image I'm gonna show you, and this will be the last one for today, was, is actually from, so there's two images and I could honestly, <laughs> oh, I love this book so much. So I could show you a ton, but I'm gonna go with, oh, there's so many. Too many. Okay, let's go with the one that I initially had. So, this is the one I initially had. And this is a picture that Robert Frank took in San Francisco. And you can tell, well maybe you can tell by like the, kind of the rolly hills. And the reason that I love this image is because this image for me is a reminder of the idea that it's better to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. Um, and a lot of us, if you have ever tried to take a picture of a stranger, like a candid picture of a stranger in the street, you know the anxiety that comes with someone maybe noticing you taking their picture. And this is a perfect personification of this. Like, this is a very intimidating scene. 
for a lot of photographers. The idea that you're trying to capture someone and they see you capturing them and they don't seem super invested or into it, right? But I think that for me, this was a reminder of the idea that even photographers who I aspire towards have to overcome the same fears that I have to overcome in terms of making work. They still feel, feel fearful making images of other people. They still kind of go through the same stuff that we all go through as photographers. And so for me personally, it's just been really useful to remind myself that I'm not doing anything that other people haven't done before me. In the same way that they're scared, I'm scared, right? But that doesn't stop me from making a really strong image. And I really love this image too, okay? So I just wanted to show you a few images that really moved me and spoke to me. So I've been fortunate enough to share some of the images that have really moved me as a photographer. Now I want some of you to make an effort to figure out what images move you. Go through social media. Think about the images or the photographs that you've seen that have really impacted you, or that you think are important, or that you think are beautiful or valuable. I want you to organize those images in a mood board. And the easiest way to do that, go to padlet.com. P-A-D-L-E-T dot com. It's a website that allows you to essentially build out vision boards for the most part. Um, and you can literally just take any images that you've seen anywhere and just upload them directly to that site. For me, I use it as a resource to just, in the same way that you would use any vision board, right? Inspiration, um, a reference point, and maybe it can give you some guidance as to how to continue or to grow into your craft. The main thing is you're only going to grow as a photographer by looking at good work and by making work. And so, again, one of the important things that I can say, or one of the most important things that I can say to all of you, is make an effort to figure out what photographs have moved you. Study them. Research them and try and figure out what it was that actually moved you in terms of these images. That's how we learn to make meaningful photographs. That's it for today's lesson. I'll see you guys in a little bit.